Hello, this afternoon I thought I'd show you how to do a very simple blue sky. Um, so if you come this way, uh, right, first thing you've got to bear in mind with skies is that the zenith, the top bit of the sky above your head, is a dark, much darker colour than the horizon. And you've got to factor that into your painting. So what we're going to do is use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna because we don't live in the Mediterranean. We live in, well, I live in Scotland. You perhaps live in a place like the UK where, again, we haven't got these blue skies. So I've got ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna, which will give us a kind of a nice grey. At the horizon, you mix up um, raw sienna and it's very dilute. Now, if you come here, you can see the raw sienna I've mixed up here is like, um, well, it's like wee wee, actually. <laughs> it's the only thing I can think of. Uh, not sick cow wee wee, but um, anyway, that's, that's a pretty good descriptive word for it okay this is dry paper um and uh i know some of the books say to work on wet but you can work on wet paper but you have no control whatsoever so um let's go with dry paper okay uh i've got a, a one inch flat uh, wash brush if you find that just freaks you out and you couldn't cope with that then just use something like a half inch um, but I've been doing it a long time, so I think I'm reasonably um, happy with um, um, a one-inch brush. Okay, if, well, again, a lot of the books tell you to do that. <laughs> and then that, 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 that. And if you do that, I find you get this effect. If you come in closely, Tarantino, can you see you get kind of lines, which you don't want. You want this fly to go down, this fly, this sky to go down perfectly flat. So... Here I've got them is uh, Ultramarine Blue and Burn Sienna. Load my brush. All right, now this is what I do slightly different from the books. I go in slanty ways like that. Again, look, I'm loading, loading, loading my brush each time. So I've tipped my brush into that paint three times already. Now I just crisscross over and I'm just stroking the paint down. Now as soon as it gets um, a little bit dry, you can either move the paint across like that, um, and just keep going down, pulling this bead down in a crissy crossy sort of way. I'm sure there's a technical term for crissy crossy sort of way. Um, I'm just pulling it down. There's plenty of paint on there now, so I don't have to worry too much. And now you can breathe, so you don't have to brush. Um, again, just pull it down. And you can see it's going down perfectly flat. Don't, whatever you do, go back into that wash. Um, if there's a little hair or something in that, leave it. Don't go back into it again. Look, it's getting a little bit dry, so I can add a bit more paint to it. Um, now I'm getting towards the horizon now, so I'm wanting it to dry up a little bit because what I'm going to do is then paint with the very dilute raw sienna colour. All right, so I take that out, quickly dab my brush, load up with the raw sienna, and just go straight across like that. And that, and I just take it down the horizon. You can see surface tension just keeps it there. If you then wash your brush and dry it briefly, squeeze the moisture out of it, that's what's called a thirsty brush. So it will then pick up any of the residue. And as you can see, that's gone down perfectly flat. Now, I'm gonna show you one that I did earlier because I'm, I think what you can do is make this into a little landscape. So. Here we are, as you can see, there's the perfectly flat wash and there's the light horizon. Now this is why it's really useful to have a light horizon. It's because it gives you something to paint on. If I tried to paint that on top of blue, it wouldn't stand out. And also if I painted that blue all the way down, it would just look like, um, it would just look like a flag. Um, what we want the sky to do is to go like that. So it's a technique in painting where you put this um, warm, uh, very light horizon and it gives the effect that the sky is like that's really important okay so what I've done there so this is completely dry now and um, don't do anything until it's completely dry and then if you can see I've just painted a hill that is just the sky color again but a little bit a um, little bit stronger and all I did was I loaded my brush and I've done this before in previous um, videos there we are that's it you get this bead going and if I just take it and it just goes um, perfectly flat like that and once that's dry 
say like that. What I can do then is ump up the colour a bit and then I can paint it again. And again, I need to get... And that's how you build up layers of hills. And I think I've just got time to show you how to do a bit of a C. So I'll just do that briefly. Um, and very, very quickly, a bit of a C for you. Um, do you remember we did that broken wash? Well, here I've got the same colours but mixed up just a little bit stronger. And what I'm going to do, this is very scary. Do you remember we did trees and we did them like that? Well, this time it's the same wash. This should be dry, really. At least, so I'm going to try and avoid that. Bit. And I'm just going to drag my brush across the surface of the paper like that. That's it. Now, as you come further down the paper, just fill in the white at the back because you don't want that. I've just left a little white because I don't want that to run in ordinarily. Probably wouldn't need this so that that much. Um, need a bit more paint. Right. So as I come forward, I'm going to leave more and more of the white so that we get this idea of the sea. It's a really, really simple way of painting the sea. It's probably the easiest landscape you can do, but it's really good because it's got um, quite a few, it's just a couple of techniques. It's got flat wash and it's got a bit of a broken wash view. There we are, all ready for a boat. Thank you for watching and have a go.